Hello YouTube, Randomoff64 here with another video, and in this video I'm going to be explaining all of the redstone components and how they function. First off, you have the good old classic redstone dust. On Java Edition, when you right click on the redstone dust, it turns into a redstone dot so it doesn't power the blocks around it. This is your base line for connecting up all circuits and devices together. Here is the redstone torch. The redstone torch gives out a constant power source until it has been powered itself. Here's the redstone block. The redstone block will always give a constant out power output no matter what. It is impossible to turn this thing off. Trust me, I've tried. Here's the repeater. The repeater will extend out the redstone strength and it will also put a delay if you right click on it. Here's the redstone lamp. The redstone lamp emits a light source when it is powered and when it is not powered it remains off. Here is a stone button. Just a button. It powers uh, any redstone device. Here's a wood button. It also powers any redstone device. Device, But the wood button stays down longer than the stone button does. Here's a lever. A lever gives a constant output depending if it's on or off. Without looking at any redstone, you can see if it's on or off by checking out the little particle symbols from when you flick it on. Here's a pressure plate. A pressure plate will only work when standing on. A stone pressure plate will not detect if any item has been dropped on it. Unlike the wood pressure plate, where if I drop this, if I drop this on the stone pressure plate, the pressure plate does not activate. Unlike the wood pressure plate. This is a heavy weighted pressure plate, so you have to have a certain amount of items in your inventory, or a certain amount of items have to be on, or a certain weight of items have to be on top of this pressure plate for it to activate. This is a light, this is a lightweight pressure plate. It will only activate if a heavy or light item is on top of it. Here is a piston. A piston will push, but not pull blocks, and it will push players and other mobs around. Here is a sticky piston. It will push and pull blocks, but only push players and mobs. Here is a slime block. If you use a slime, slime block with the sticky piston, you can push and pull uh, other blocks that are adjacent to it. The same thing goes for the honey block, but slime blocks and honey blocks will not stick to each other. Slime blocks and honey blocks will not stick to each other. And they can both push and pull blocks. This is a trap chest. Now, it's very hard to tell the difference between a trap chest and a regular chest. Honestly, you can barely tell the difference. The only way you can tell is by the slight red tint around the latch. If you open a trap chest, it gives a redstone output. You can see that redstone lamp turns on down in the bottom right corner. But when you open a regular chest, it stays off. This is a target block. A target block can redirect a redstone current, or if, for example, a bow or a fishing rod. Let me actually grab the redstone knife here. If a bow or a fishing rod. I take that back. I have been stood corrected. 
if a bow or crossbow hit it, it gives a redstone output for a temporary amount of time. This is a dropper. A dropper will drop items. This is a dispenser. A dispenser will also drop items, but any item that is deployable, for example, let's see here, where are the arrows? If an arrow is put into the dispenser, it will fire the arrow out. This is a observer. An observer will detect any type of block update. So if there's a block that is broken slash placed in front of it, it will not detect if anything has been emptied from a chest, but it will detect activations and deactivations from buttons and pressure plates and levers. This is a hopper. A hopper can transfer items into other things like dispensers, droppers, chests, and other hoppers. This is a comparator. A comparator is a very complicated but useful device that I will get to in a later video. This is a lectern. A lectern you can use to put a book on top of it. Um, Actually, you need a book and quill, my bad, on top of it, but it only has a redstone capability if com if paired with a comparator. This block all the way back here, this is a good piece of TNT. And from anybody who understands what TNT stands for, when you activate it with redstone, it can this is a lightning rod. A lightning rod will give a redstone output when struck by lightning during a thunderstorm. This is a tripwire with string. It is to detect when a mob is on or walks across it. This is a rail. You put a minecart like so on top of the rail and you can use the rails to move the minecarts around. Minecart here. So the player can hop inside and move around inside the light car. This is a minecart chest. A minecart chest will store items. This is a furnace minecart, which is only available on Java Edition. You put something in to burn, for example, coal. And it will power itself to move around for a certain amount of time. This is a TNT minecart. A TNT minecart will activate when used with the activator rail that is shown just down there. This is a hopper minecart, or minecart with hopper. If you put an item in, it will deposit into a chest below, or it will take from a chest above. As long as it's sitting on top of a rail, which this is clearly not. This is a powered rail. When you power the powered rail, it will move the minecarts and mine and it'll, it'll move all the minecarts with increased speed. When it's deactivated, it stops the minecarts. So as you can see there, it's very hard to push. If I come over here and I push it while the rail is on. very easy to push. This is a detector rail. A detector rail will give a redstone output when there is a minecart on top of it. When it's coupled with a comparator, you can get special outputs from it if there is a minecart chest or hopper on top of it. 
This is the activator rail. When the activator rail is activated, it will visually you can see. Now it's that minecart. Visually you can see with a regular minecart that it'll shake the minecart. And if a player is inside when it's activated, it will kick him out. And if a TNT minecart goes across a activate act an activated activator rail, that's a tongue twister. It will blow up. This is a note block. A note block, depending on the block it's placed on, will play a sound. So as you see here, it's on top of the block, it has a nice bass. There's a piano here. And then if you put it on top of any type of stone, it's a bass drum. This is a daylight sensor, which if you right click on it, will turn into a nightlight sensor during a certain time of day and night. So currently it's day, so it will give a redstone output for when it's switched to day. But as soon as I switch this to night, it no longer gives a redstone output. All of these are just all different types of doors. You have oak, birch, jungle, spruce, acacia, dark oak, crimson, warped wood doors. This is an iron door. An iron door will not be opened by a player unless they use a redstone signal. Here's the same for the trap doors. You got an oak trap door, birch, acacia, spruce, jungle, spruce, acacia, dark oak, crimson, and warped. And the same thing goes for the iron trap door. You need a redstone signal. Here's all the fences there are. I showed all of these because if you watch, all of these can be activated with the redstone signal. The only one that needs a redstone signal is the iron trap door. Thank you all for watching. I hope you liked this video. If you did like, Share it with your friends. Subscribe if you want to see more of this type of content. This was RandomMuff64. I hope you have a nice day. Bye.